Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's official. I am back for the fall, as it were. Uh, I know I promised everybody at the beginning of the summer that I'd be back at some point, and I still uh, obviously gave you guys some decodes throughout the summer too, because there was so much going on. Uh, but we're sh shifting gears here just a bit as of today. Um, if you watch my channel update that I actually did yesterday, you'll know what the direction is heading toward Theta and how heavily uh, I'm gonna leverage Patreon and Theta in the future. Doesn't mean I'm gonna stop doing the videos over here. I'm actually gonna keep doing all the current war stuff. So everything you've been used to seeing in the same uh, release schedule even, about once every two weeks, you can anticipate that I'll continue to add over here on, on YouTube. But um, after today's lesson, you'll see kind of how it matters to, to factor in what we're gonna talk about here uh, with Usagi Yojimbo and how, the, how this anthropomorphized animal symbolism, like we've talked about with the fox and the fox faction, actually factors into one of the videos I just did a couple of days ago over on Patreon that you can find uh, as it relates to a character from the 80s called Bucky O'Hare, a comic book character who's a green rabbit. And, this, and, I, and I explain in this video how the themes of The Wizard of Oz and the themes of Alice in Wonderland all kind of fit in, of course, if you're uh, not new to the channel, then you're no stranger, of course, to the, to the Wizard of Oz research, and of course, how it relates to Apple, the mind control paradigm, the Bitcoin reset, the video that got banned on, on YouTube, the one that originally had me posted on Patreon in the first place, but I did, I did that the other day, and it's going to factor in, in a large way, to the stuff that we're going to talk about also, uh, as it relates to Usagi Yojimbo, the white rabbit. Remember, follow the white rabbit on the in the Matrix movies, and the white rabbit in the Alice in Wonderland. And sure enough, Usagi Yojimbo is a samurai white rabbit, which we are matching up with these last two videos that we've been doing with the false history as it relates to the samurai class in ancient Japan. So. Anyway, if you don't know uh, what I'm talking about, these last two videos here, both about the, the samurai, will catch you up to speed with what we're going to talk about today. You don't necessarily need to watch this one because I'm going to make this mutually exclusive, but it does get greatly enhanced if you if you go to the Patreon page and watch this. Uh, if you become a member of the the insider community, I'm going to be, like I said, growing this Patreon channel and posting a poll later today for patrons about what content they want me to prioritize covering over there, plus have agency over, over what we do in Theta. So I said all that stuff better in my update yesterday, so we're not gonna get bogged down by it. I do wanna get into how Usagi Yojimbo, the white rabbit, relates to the samurai history, the, Sum the Sumerai, the Sumerians, the Ainu, the Anu, as, as, we're, as we're talking about the tapestry of history, we are, we are investigating through, you know, like we did last time in Anatoly Fomenko's work. This was in the last video I did that you can find, uh, like I said, over in these two last videos, how the false history as portrayed by the Jesuits and the fox factions, so we're looking at the anthropomorphized animal of the fox representing the Jesuits and their sly conniving nature, which I, I greatly expanded on in that, in, in my Patreon video with Bucky O'Hare. Uh, and how false academia, false history, false science is being portrayed wherever you see this fox character. And so we're using these as markers to through these anthropomorphized stories of comic books and cartoons that actually gets locked into place with the symbolism in the minds of kids. I'm hoping to show how it pervades all the way through all these levels of pop culture and actually connects all of these myths. Alice in Wonderland and The Wizard of Oz are nothing but children's novels as well. And what we see is these, these same themes persist through especially the 20th century in this mind control program that we seem to live in in the United States. So I'm gonna show all of that today through some characters you have heard of, you haven't heard of, relating it back again to, to, to Bucky O'Hare. By the way, Buckminster Fuller and Bucky O'Hare, hint, hint, 
representate represented here. We we so it's uh, this is kind of a fun topic for a lot of people. But Usagi Yojimbo has more to do with what we've been talking about in samurais, obviously, because as you can see, he is a samurai. But the first thing that I that I wanted to bring to people's attention about him is Stan Sakai. Stan Sakai was the was the author of these comics. And if, if, you, if you have seen these last two videos, you'll know that The Ghost of Tsushima was the game I was just playing to decode what was going on with the false history relating to the Mongols, who were actually Slavic people, also white people, that were in, that were in, uh, in war at the time of this video game, right? 1274, when, when the Mongols invaded the island of Tsushima. So... I was talking there about that game, and the main character of the game belongs to Clan Sakai. You play as Lord Sakai in that game. Stan Sakai, Clan Sakai, there's, I don't know if there's something to that, but I, I, it stood out to me incredibly so uh, as it relates to, to that video game. Because remember, I'm just going to pull up the, the, um, the wiki page for it again. If you guys remember, the director of the video game was Nate Fox, <laughs> and there's fo there are foxes all over the video game. You're getting charmed by foxes. So this is this all connects in some sort of a way, oddly, um, this this samurai theme from Japan. But Usagi Ojimbo was one of the characters that I really liked as a kid. Actually, he 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 had a crossover in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series. Um, I had his action figure here. I see I've got some of these in-box action figures from my childhood still. I don't know if anybody can see it, but it's the Usagi Yojimbo action figure character. It was one of my favorite ones. And I had a couple of the comic books too. But uh, it, it, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting comic book because it tells kind of the story of uh, an anthropomorphized version of Miyamoto Musashi, the famous, the famous samurai duelist, uh, who wrote the Book of Five Rings. The Book of Five Rings, which is the steganography, obviously. I, I gotta, it's one of my favorite books. I should do a video on that as well to tie into some of this stuff uh, because Japan is not going to be anything but a growing meme, as we're gonna see, I think, over the course of the next couple of years, and I'm gonna show you how it relates <laughs> to what's happening over there geopolitically right now in, today, in, in today's environment by the end of this video. Because as, I, as I'm telling you, to dedicate these YouTube videos to, we're gonna be doing V steganography and current war situations, uh, situation reports until I don't see anything in that regard anymore. It's, I, I don't see that cooling down. So Usagi Ujimbo, he was a, which, which stands for the rabbit bodyguard, which is what, how that translates uh, into Japanese, right? It's a comic book series created by Stan Sakai, set primarily in the Edo period. Anthropomorphic animals replacing humans. And uh, he's a rabbit ronin, not a samurai. But he, but he does don the samurai, the samurai garb uh, every so often in, in the comic book. So I should, I should say, same kind of uh, historical context but maybe not the actual samurai class. Either way, what we're looking at is the white rabbit aspect of his character. Follow the white rabbit as we're looking at through the matrix. Even Q, right? Q has this whole follow the white rabbit uh, situation about it, but I think to lead people down the wrong rabbit holes. So I'm hoping to point people in the, in the correct direction with some of this stuff because remember, if you if we go watch watch what I was talking about with Bucky O'Hare and how it relates to this false false agenda and space and the money reset the Bitcoin reset all of it all of it's tied up in the memes here and he's a green rabbit hint hint Yoda like we talked about earlier in the year with the Mandalorian series what did Yoda represent that's kind of where that's kind of where those themes in that video are going so Usagi Ujimbo right. This white rabbit samurai character. Well, what's what else is interesting about Usagi Ujim? Oops, I keep clicking that. I don't need three of his Wikipedia pages open. Um, is that where do I go here? You also have an interesting crossover here with space, which I always thought was weird as a kid. But you have space Usagi. So 
not only are the samurai class tied with the gods, the ones that came from space, the Anunnaki, the, the children of the gods, the ones that manipulated the DNA of man in the Bible, right? In the times of Enoch, times before Enoch even, times of the Watchers, what we've covered in my series where I, where I was going over Andrew Collins' work. Space Usagi has something to do with the crossover with Japan. As you can see, there's something to Japan and a crossover with space. And it's no more apparent than following the white rabbit to that, to that conclusion through this anthropomorphized symbolism that, that, that we find in all of these tales. So Space Usagi which was going to be a TV show, in fact. They did this pilot. And they, it, it never got off the ground from there. But here's some of the imagery from the comics. Um, really interesting stuff. Really interesting stuff. I remember when this was come, when, when, when these were coming out, uh, and I had a couple of them. I, ha I was trying to find them the other day because I just came back into some of my childhood stuff, which is how I found this Ninja Turtles character. I was like, oh, wow, interesting. It'll factor into this discussion today even more than you think because, like I said... Usagi was a crossover character on the Ninja Turtles as well. But uh, it, it's, it's going to factor into all of the themes that we've discussed ultimately with the Space Force today too. Uh, Nikola Tesla's technology, Star Wars, Wizard of Oz, the Yellow Brick Road, the Bitcoin Reset. All of these themes, as, as you know, uh, we've tied together into... Here we go, the, the Space Force and the Year Zero Monetary Reset, plus one of the factions, the 3M faction, the Military Mafia and, uh, Military Mafia and Masons, want to go to space. That's where the capitalists want to go. And these are the organizations we're talking about. The Wizards, the STO, Joint Space Operations, <laughs> Center Vault for Information. So um, these are the themes. These are the themes, and somehow... Because the history mystery, the false history is, that's fed to us is diverting us away from space and Japan seems to be a huge component to this. I think we're onto something is what I'm saying. And uh, again, following the white rabbit, Usagi Yojimbo. So Usagi Yojimbo itself, as that directive to follow the white rabbit, you, you come across the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, crossover, like I said, he was he appeared on the series, a TV series, a couple of times. But this concept of toads and frogs was one I also talked about in the Patreon video, and you can get more expansive knowledge on that topic if you watch it. But the the brief overview of it is that the toads, as an anthropomorphized animal, they represent the swamp dwelling creatures, and the swamp dwelling creatures are what like what's this whole theme with this drain the swamp thing that. One faction is, is fighting against the other. Remember, I was arguing the 3M faction backing Donald Trump, the, 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 the faction that wants to go to space. They're against the technocracy, and the, and, and the, and they're, and the technocracy is Silicon Valley, it's the CIA, it's Hollywood, it's Wall Street, plus China, right? It's all controlled by this whole communist structure. And so that's the swamp, right? And they're the ones that are suppressing the history the most, actually. For, for what it's worth, I think the 3M faction wants all the knowledge out there, but I also think they have their own issues. Um, you know, they do, for whatever reason, they keep us in the dark about all this. I have major question marks around that. But in general, what we're speaking of is like this whole drain the swamp activity because that's where the bankers have always dwelt. In the military industrial complex, within the, the pen, you know, the Pentagon, the Earth Grid Network. Remember, people are, people that are familiar with my work, follow work and, and how I tied this into the Earth Grid Control Network and how the mechanisms of control that they can use to lurk energies with on the ley line network. Buckminster Fuller, Buckyball, right? Follow the rabbits. So, what do the toads represent, but the swamp dwellers follow the rabbit to Amsterdam, the last swamp that the bankers inhabited, and then follow them to Venice, the previous swamp before that that they inhabited. These, these, these bankers seem to have a theme of hopping on swamps. New York itself, or Wall Street, was built 
until it, all that infrastructure was built out. It was marshy land. Boston was too. So you have to think about where the swamp dwelling aspect of things are. And I taught a lesson about how the snake, the snake eats toads and how the snake's jaw can expand to eat the toad. And that was its main primary source of food. I have the character, character sketchbooks that I went into in this, in this video that, that shared all that stuff. And then me symbolizing that once you eat the toad, you, you dispel the knowledge, you digest the knowledge that was being hidden. And what, is, what, is a, what, what are the snakes that we talk about, but the ones that go up the Kundalini, the two serpents overcome the mind control of the five senses. This is the V6 steganography, guys. This is why it matters. So you can decode these spells for yourself. And I'm hoping, I'm just giving you a more, a broader and broader lexicon as we go along with these lessons. But in order for your Kundalini to raise, it needs snake food. It needs, it needs to eat the false history, digest it so it can, so it can have true history. So no more is that actually represented here than in the punk frogs from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle series. So not only, as you can see, this false history narrative is being alluded to even in children's cartoons in a way that is quite fascinating. Here we have a couple of tie-ins that are going to come all the way back to this Chinese, Japanese ancient culture as it relates to the alien agenda. And the four punk frogs, which were created by the Shredder, the ultimate arch enemy in the series, were Attila the Frog, like Attila the Hun. Genghis Frog, like Genghis Khan. Napoleon Bonafrog, like Napoleon Bonaparte. And Rasputin the Mad Frog, like Rasputin the, the, the philosopher and peasant. That was kind of like Russia's Gandhi, that was a martyr. And I will go over all of these things. These right here are indi indications that look here, there's false history afoot. What do we know about Genghis Khan? We've already talked in the, in the last series, the last couple series relating to the Ghost of Tsushima series of how false the Mongol narrative is because also through Anatoly Fomenko's work, we know, we know that the Mongols were the Slavs, the Slavic people, red haired, white Russians basically. So we have white people as samurai who seem to have come from the Mesopotamian Sumerian area to begin with. Sumerai, Sumerian. And then we have the Ainu moniker, Anu moniker, plus we have all of the indications that we've also, we've also discovered over summer about the Irish tie-ins to the Slavic history and that relates even to the Lewis and Clark expeditions. How does that relate to the, and, and how does that come full circle, but to have Napoleon Bonifrog, if anybody's never read this Walter Bosley book, The Esoteric Napoleon, there's some, there's some major conspiratorial false information around the French Revolution afoot, what, and, and the, the reign that Napoleon had, and what his exploits after his so-called imprisonment were so we cut and how does that relate to the tale of twin cities the two the, the tale of two cities french revolution story by charles dickens and the twin cities riots that got sparked in minnesota the spot of the glass steagall super bowl and we're seeing that glass steagall remember glass steagall related to eagles go back and watch around my super bowl work and you'll find all this stuff out all these patterns are coming to fruition now guys this is it's coalescing we're getting to the bottom of something here and so anytime you see the toads now you'll know oh there's some false history afoot this it's being put out by the bankers for an agenda somehow napoleon was all into the esoteric arts as well and getting to the bottom of the hermeticism that pervaded ancient Christianity and Gnosticism. And then you have Rasputin. And, the, and here's Rasputin from the late 1800s. He's kind of a contemporary of Nikola Tesla. Uh, but he was, he was martyred after getting close with the Tsarian family because he was a peasant. He was kind of, he's, he wasn't like a Jesus character exactly, but you know, he, because 
he wasn't he wasn't like the divine embodiment of, of God, you know, like Jesus. But uh, but he 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 lived kind of this more Gandhi type existence and gave um, much of his sage wisdom over to the ruling classes uh, in in the seats of, in the seat of the czars that such that better, more philosophical, philosophically based decision making could occur. And the Bolshevik revolution destroyed others an impetus to destroy what was happening there in Russia. Again, <coughs> false history in Russia, false history in all these countries, something's going on. And the, the, the reason I, and this is even the Smithsonian Magazine, I know I don't like Smithsonian at all, you guys have heard me say, but I read, this is actually not a terrible representation of what happened. It's actually a fairly balanced piece, all things considered, knowing what I know about Rasputin's life versus what false falsities are out there. But the point that they made here is absolutely sound, where once he was, once he was dead, the responses from the public were mixed because they reflected Rasputin's checkered reputation, a reputation that was only checkered because of propaganda, because he was doing you know such good things. Uh, the elite from whence... Yusupov and his co-conspirators came, rejoiced, and applauded the killers when they appeared in public. The peasantry class mourned Rasputin, because he was one of their own, seeing the murder as one of the example of the nobility controlling the Tsar. When a peasant rose to a position of influence with the Tsar, he was murdered by wealthy men. Just like the bankers murder, it's, it's a banking conspiracy. I remember, the bankers, the swamp dwellers, are at the heart of the reputation destruction of all of these people. Uh, and I guess more the reputation destruction of these two and more of the false history behind these two. The lessons we already know about Genghis Khan, who, was pro who came from Russia. Interesting that Rasputin's for Russian. Genghis is a, Genghis is, is a Slavic, also of the same type, the type of uh, ethnicity. Attila, the Hun who remember, this is an interesting one because of how it ties into the movie fiasco in the current war we see with China and the United States today as it relates to the movie Mulan, as you'll see in a second. Movie Mulan, is the, the live action movie Mulan is in the news. Uh, but Attila the Hun was the uh, enemy of Mulan in the first one. But the Mongols, oddly enough, are the enemies of Mulan in this second one. So... Anyway, we're, we're going to see here also with Attila the Hun, of course, people like to paint Attila the Hun just like the Mongol, just like Genghis Khan and the Mongols, as Asian. And what we're going to find out, if you, if you actually even read Wikipedia, that the Hungarians claim descendancy of the Huns. Hungarians, right? It's the Goths, the, the people the people that helped sack Rome were the Huns. The Visigoths, the Huns, these are all kind of wrapped up in similar factions, the Germanic tribes, to overthrow that to throw overthrow that empire at that very specific time. History seems to be rewritten entirely, so nobody knows about this because Rome, the Vatican, the V faction, the Fox faction, the Jesuits, who have everybody under their thumbs, would have all of this conflated so you don't get to the bottom of it. Because what's the implication is that they're weak, maybe, that they have a weak point, that they can be defeated, that they have been defeated before. Can't have that. No, can't have that. So white people again, white people again, and it's, it's all these weird gender and racial wars right now that are pitting people against each other based on the color of their skin. And this is all part of it. There's a reason why I think the whole slavery debate becomes in if you, I also talked much more about the slavery side of things in this last video. Um, I think I'm onto something there, obviously. But uh, there's a whole history component that would have people believe, keep everybody under a thumb, including the white people. And the white people are enslaved to the history that they don't know. Black people seem to be enslaved by the actual enslavement 
of them of their people ever since they were Hebrews. Hebrews, African African slaves that that, that what we now call African slaves, people that have also seen my previous work have uh, have learned that Africa was actually what they used to call the Caucasus Mountains, the, where the Caucasian Slavic people came from. And it's it's just it's it's all of this wordplay back and forth. Remember slavery, slavery, the Slavic people were enslaved. at some point in time in this whole grand mystery of the history mystery that we have. So Disney, as I said, plays into this as well with that Mulan series. I, I covered some of the DuckTales series with Disney. There's a, a Disney thread going through this and I covered that in this, in this video too. But Mulan, Mulan here, uh, is, is played by all these Chinese Chinese people. It's just made all of the news because it was, oh, we actually got Chinese people that, to, as the actors, which I thought was strange that they, you know, there was all this, there was all this to do about the, the fact that they did that. But the plot of the live action one is, is where the emperor of China issues a decree that one man per family must serve in the imperial army to depend, defend from northern invaders, is all they say. Northern invaders. Remember, the Mongols were the northern invaders. And they were white, and they were, they were red-haired, and they were Slavic people, and they were very large. So, uh, as the story goes in the cartoon, like, her father was too old, so she steps in. I haven't seen, seen the live-action one. Um, but it's interesting how it's in the news, is how we're going to talk about this today. Here are the characters. The Bori Khan, the Roaring Warrior, commands the Northern Invasion. So he's a Khan, right? So, we infer that they're Mongols. I don't actually know if they ever referred to them explicitly in this series as Mongols, but as you can see, he's not Slavic. They're portraying him as some sort of Asian. Uh, so what is happening with this whole thing, which is interesting, is that uh, the movie was filmed in a particular location that is starting to have some controversy show up. So. Um, China itself banned coverage of the film. Part of the current war situation, the U.S.-China war, is heating up as it relates to the box office, specifically because COVID-19 already destroyed any hopes that this movie probably has to recoup the, the money that it lost. I think that it's ridiculous because Disney's monthly subscriptions, like 10 bucks, I think, 10 bucks a month probably, something like that, but they're charging $30. $30 per ticket for this movie. You have to pay $30 to rent it right now. And so that's kind of a steep proposition for most people as it is. Um, but it costs $200 million to release and they have to recoup the cost, blah, 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 right? Well, a lot of that was probably going to come out of China, they figured. But China is disputing this treatment that the United States is rendering from this... Xinjiang province, which apparently is where some Uyghurs, which are Muslim slaves that China uses to produce goods and services, you know, they're, they're sweat, sweat, sweatshop labor. There you go. That's, that's the terminology that you probably know. But, uh, and so the Uyghurs there are in this Xinjiang region, which the movie was filmed in. And so China's in this roundabout way rendering the movie to be banned because of the political statement that it makes. Not to mention, uh, one of the stars of the movie was in support for Hong Kong, which I think is really what the, what the heart of it is. I think this is actually the main star of the show, too. She was supporting the Hong Kong <laughs> freedom movement, which the, the Chinese Communist Party does not like at all. I think this is really where you find the purpose of this little tit for tat thing. So we have these current war themes starting to starting to hit the pocketbooks of these corporations now too. Not only are we having sovereign geopolitical infighting and cross border fighting, <coughs> but we are having um, some of this odd fox faction right around the same the same uh, uh, geographical area that we've been talking about with. 
the samurai illusion. Following the right rabbit, remember, the Usagi Ujimbos following the story into space somehow. We now have these clashes with Chinese authorities in the United in the United States. And then, not to mention, aside from the movie being banned in China, people are boycotting it in the United States. So this is all about this this boycott Mulan hashtag because of, like I said, openly and proudly endorsing police brutality in Hong Kong is how people are phrasing it. And she was just, I think, pro-police. And then there's this support for Hong Kong, pro-police type of message that she's portraying. And none of those are palatable with the Black Lives Matter anti-police or anything related to freedom. It's, a, it's all the anti-fascists that are, that are just spinning this. They're, they're, they're taking their orders, I suspect. They're, they're twisting the truth. They're getting paid. And we have propaganda wars going on like I've never seen. It, it, as you're going to see at the end of the video, the, the current war, test, we have an old-fashioned current war energy war going on too. Just like in the movie, the current war, which we base our meme off of for, for, for what we see. Because it's all based around Nikola Tesla's tech. We have an actual battle between the company Nikola and the company Tesla. That's a modern day actual current war, which is kind of funny. That it's also spawned out this week. All this stuff is crazy. So continuing on with this Mongol theme, guys, before we leave it entirely, because I want, I, I'm just giving a little bit of a primer for the fact that we're going to be using a little bit of anthropomorphization for what animals represent moving forward, because it itself is kind of a form of steganography. Uh, it goes right hand in hand with the V and X steganography, obviously, but because uh, Daniel List or Dark Journalist covers the X steganography going into space. I only mentioned the crossover elements there, but somehow there's this other character who's who's also, as you can see, he's on the back of he's on the back of that card too. But another Ninja Turtles character I had growing up was this guy, the Panda Khan. So we're talking about Mongols and the Panda Khan. And uh, I, because I also remember that this was a fun one for me to remember because the PandaCon, it turns out, never made an appearance in the Ninja Turtles. He was just on the side, but he's now getting his own comic book series. And I haven't really looked into this, to be honest. My only experience of it was with this action figure that I had. And you see he's, he's got some, some samurai-looking garb there himself. Um, but the, the main thing about the Panda Khan is obviously pandas are native to China, but uh, if we're talking about the V steganography component to this, there's also a different kind of panda that's native to the same to the same area as the actual Chinese pandas. Basically, don't know if it, many people have heard of this, but it's the oops. I'll, and I'll come back to the story in a second. But it's the red panda. This is a red panda. Who looks suspiciously like a fox, right? So we're gonna get into that in a second, but what lead what led what led me to that was that Russia is naturally the red uh, 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 mon has naturally the red moniker from the days of the Soviet Union, is what I'm trying to say. And naturally China today has the red moniker. So if I'm follow, I, what I what, what I led what I let the research lead me toward, which ended up being kind of a cool thread that, that is ending up connecting here, was that the Panda Khan was connected obviously just through this the same universe as Usagi Ujimbo. We're following Usagi Ujimbo in his comic book series and connecting it through the Ninja Turtles and all of these false history narratives with the Toads that we all that we all just went through connecting these these uh, these false history narratives for particular figures and since he is also a Khan we can infer that the Genghis Khan it's another clue that the Genghis Khan narrative is false because we're following this thread of the white rabbit so I remembered this story from last summer about a year ago I remember this whole thing where before any of the COVID-19 
Russia and China were best friends. They were doing everything together to get this One Belt, run, ro One Road initiative going, which has fallen apart now. And Russia is now doing what? But going around China to Japan, which we'll get to in a second. They're doing all their brokering of deals through Japan now for technology. So Russia's moving on without them, but this was an interesting thing where China uh, gave a two pandas to the Moscow Zoo, and it, it made this whole to-do because they had panda cams, and oh, we got baby pandas now, and like everybody does. Um, and you, you have this whole story about cooperation with Xi and Putin. So the two, the former communist state, Russia is no longer a communist state, but China is. You've got the cross section between them, the red, the red theme, the red star, and you combine the two concepts pretty easily in, in my mind to view it in, the ter in terms of the red panda. And what is the red panda symbolism trying to tell us? All the way through, of course, this Fox faction tie-in to all these comic book series, which you'll find more about, of course, the whole Fox faction uh, narrative carries on further from these last two videos and the last in the other Patreon video, but the Red Panda is also called the Fox Bear <laughs> or the Firefox. Firefox, and apparently it's, you know, the Firefox logo that you actually see down here at the bottom of my screen. That's not actually a fox, but it is a depiction of a red panda. So you, you have this, this whole crossover between, because it looks just like a fox. That's what it's called, a fox bear, more than a panda bear. And uh, you have, therefore, in terms of this history narrative where all the toads are all connected to all this false Russian and Slavic narrative, the bear is also something, even to this day, which is very synonymous with the Siberian region, the bear is a very large symbol in Russia. So the way I decode this is to say that there is much history in the country of the bear to be decoded that's falsely, that's falsely painted as Mongolian horde mentality in a way that portrays them as Asian when they're not, when they're actually Russians. If you follow through this interpretation thread that I'm painting, right? So I, I, paint, I, I give you these, these little pieces or hallmarks to reinforce the message that we are decoding about the ancient samurai and what, what was the true racial identity for one of the people that were involved and how does that pertain to the biblical texts about the DNA manipulation with the aliens. How are the aliens connected with Japan? And how are they connected with Atlantis, which fell thousands of years before any of this stuff that we're talking about? Hopefully we'll find these things out, right? But uh, we have other things to get to here in terms of the actual current war too. Like I, I went into, in the Wizard of Oz series, in the last video, the Patreon one I just I did with the Buckminster Fuller theme, we also talk about TikTok and the character of TikTok in The Wizard of Oz. So you can also find more out about TikTok in this in this video. But for the for the sake of this video, TikTok continues to be the center of a banking war that's happening. The 3M faction wants to ban TikTok. TikTok's got back doors to China, as we know. TikTok's this addictive social media app that the Gen Z is using, right? There's your Gen Z, part of the Z steganography that, that I'm gonna get into this fall. But Microsoft and Walmart, about two weeks ago, joined forces, forces to put in a bid to TikTok, plus everybody else under the sun. TikTok has been, who's gonna buy TikTok? This company, this company, right? And so it's, it's an interesting it's an interesting play here because we also have just a couple of days ago a leaked document showing how the application has been used for spreading of propaganda. So not only are they surveilling it through the back door, but they're also using propaganda using the platform itself to spread propaganda. Obviously, I mean all all social media networks are 
But this one's specifically tied back to the CCP. This is why there's this war going on with TikTok. Wizard of Oz symbolizes the, the transition of the, the money system, the transition of the power structure system. There's a playbook that these wizards are using to carry out these things, guys. This is why it matters to pay the F, to, to pay the, to pay attention. Just, just to pay attention, that's all, that's all I'll say. Um, decode this stuff as you see it. Because the, it's again, the technocracy versus the space factions that, 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 that have different agendas. They have mind control over here on the technocracy and total slavery. And over here, that's generally capitalism. It's their own form. It's an own form of. It's it's another form of slavery. Essentially, it's not like over here, you and me, the the common folk, aren't put into another labor system where where we don't get to uh, really see the totality of what's going on. Maybe, but uh, I, for one, want to know how this all relates again to the aliens. We've been we've been talking about bite. Uh, uh, what was it called? It's a uh, bite dance being only a subsidiary of Tencent, right? Tencent, the company that owns them, who also owns QQ.com in the instant messenger service, Tencent, QQ. Remember, Q and V are synonymous. V for vendetta. Be, ca be cautionary of Q because... It's just, it's, a, it's another way of glyphing out what the Jesuit agenda is. The Tencent Global Reset. The Tencent Bite Dance TikTok Propaganda Mechanism. All the while, while the world, the world's top governments are like I was posting, like I posted on my last video, these, these articles, they're, they're looking at the digital currency testing. It's coming. It's coming. Educate yourself. Well, get get educated on Bitcoin and and and, uh, and figure out <laughs> figure out how that system works versus the actual Fed coin, which which we'll discuss more also over on the Theta Network. But um, this is crazy times, guys. I'm pointing these these things out because the actual wizardry is happening, and we're moving along. You've seen this. Virgin Galactic, the V the V steganography, because Virgin's announcing their space their their new space technology. Everybody's got space technology all of a sudden. And then we've got these futuristic V shaped planes. So they've got this little drone. See, it's this tiny thing. But they're testing out some new aerodynamic type options with new new commercial aircraft. And it's in a V shape. Imagine that. So we have, again, more of these announcements coming out. I'll post all of them in the description like I always do, all pertaining to the space technology paradigm. This is where everything's gonna go. If Donald Trump wins the election, I don't know where they're gonna go on the technocracy side if Biden wins the election. We'll see with all that stuff. It, it, remember, 113, bullshit, lies, mainstream, untrue, um, distrust, uh, all the all of these all of these terms in gematria equal one one three, and the election this year is one one three. We have to remember that the last time the election was one was was uh, November third, I think it was the nineteen forty two election with FDR. And I've, I've actually got an article on that today. But I I also wanted to point to some stuff around the Orwell theme on the other side because all the space stuff is well and good, but. These aren't the only stories coming out. You also got the technocracy side of things pushing, pushing for their own <laughs> ridiculous propaganda. The Organic Prepper posted an article the other day about this book that came out in defense of looting by Vicky Osterweil, who, I mean, I mean, I think, I think this person's probably, you know, a transitioned person. Let's say I th I'm very, I'm very confident that that's the case just looking at you know common sense here but vicky v steganography osterweil vicky osterweil almost like or i i see orwell in this somehow v orwell you know because this is a very 1984-esque type of <laughs> type of situation 
but it's this 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 article or blog explains explains how ridiculous this is way more way better than I ever could. Uh, but in my own words, I'm just telling you, go read this this blog. I'll I'll put this in the description because it's it's absolutely superbly ridiculous. Um, they sh- this person Vicky Osterweil argues um, basically that that th- that this notion of did they need the thing that they looted? Did the person need it? Well, that needs to be considered when when they're taking stuff and stealing stuff from people's houses. If they can't afford it, but they need still need common goods, that just makes it okay, uh, and that should be considered in courts. So there are all these ridiculous notions being put up by this left-handed technocracy situation, um, and so you see this stuff, of course, persisting with also the the mass rallies and more v-steganography. Occupy Lafayette Square. So there's this 50 day, 50 day, five, zero, uh, Occupy movement situation where they're gonna go put themselves in front of the White House. You've got a naked person spreading her legs in a V pattern. Remember the seat, this is, this is bastardization of sacred energies. This is what they're doing here. And the people that are partaking, I don't, I, I don't think know what they, what they are doing. But I think this is, this is becoming a common posture. I've been seeing people be, stripping naked in the last couple of weeks and doing this in front of police precincts. They did it in Rochester, New York, for instance, before the Rochester, New York Police Department, uh, before the Rochester Police Department, all of their uh, administrators quit all at the same time, including the chief. So this was announced for September 17th and 50 days onward from that, which I think they chose that because it takes you all the way to the election. But it is interesting that September 17th, Q, the 17th letter of the alphabet, as it prescribes itself to Q, Tencent, V, follow the white rabbit, but follow the white rabbit from the matrix and follow the white rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. Don't follow the white rabbit of Q. That's the problem with most people, right? So uh, we have these we have these things happening not only in the space arena with the V steganography poking through the mind control, <laughs> but there's a broadcast here of of some other things on this uh, this gaslighting theme we've been we've been spending so much time on. Remember uh, over here on the these last couple videos here, the gaslighting situation with the current war. And what I was arguing back in, uh, with this article, what I, what I found on Medium back in April, the height of the COVID stuff, I just thought this was spot on. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll relink this article again in, in the description as well for this video because it, it it's brilliant as it relates to now what Eric Weinstein is telling people um, that both sides have their issues. This is kind of what I'm saying too, not not in similar terms as him, but he's saying now uh, with the polling gap between Trump, Trump and Biden narrowing following two weeks of violent anti-protests, vital mental, and Biden's mental decline in full display, Weinstein is back with an epic told ya, while further repining on Democrats' pursuit of wokeism is likely to hand Donald, President Trump a victory in November. So he's talking about how all of this nonsense that we've been talking about with the gaslighting has backfired. It's totally backfired. So this has been absolutely true, but it has backfired in the way that the, that the, the technocracy does not want. And so that's why it does look like, at least to me, that we are on our way to this uh, situation rather than continuing this. Not to say that there won't, it, it, phew, after the election, all bets are off for a while, I think. It's just gonna be a, a madhouse of a country. Um, but if we see these beats beforehand, we can arm ourselves, right? Because part of the other thing that technocracy wants is to take over space themselves. But I don't think they know what they're doing. This is kind of where this whole madness with Tesla, the, the company Tesla is really starting to take flight, no pun intended, in a new way. Because in Cliff High's data, we're gonna get, get into Cliff High's data a little bit today. If anybody's not familiar with Cliff High, he is somebody who has, uh, created a web bot crawler that crawls the internet for prescient language, therefore people's expressive psychic 
abilities to forecast things, what they start talking about. And in and, and doing and using various techniques, which I won't get into here, he's, he's rendered reports that are incredibly accurate in terms of having predicted this whole COVID-19 situation 20 years ago um, and some other aspects. Uh, but uh, this is a situation his data also predicted is why it's significant and why I'm pulling it out because there's, there's another concept of his that, uh, that we're gonna pick apart here also at the end of the video when we're tying it into space. And what does that have to do with Japan? So what we have is these regulations that are not, or non-existent, that uh, are, which we greatly need because we don't have an ability to govern any of the orbital space by virtue of preventing irresponsible launching or, or, un, or unsanctioned launching because we don't have such a terminology a lot of these times. You kind of just let these corporations like SpaceX, like Tesla work willy nilly and launch rockets and satellites into space to the, to the degree that they have now doubled the amount of satellites that are up there and they want to keep going. And what it, the numbers are startling. It says in total, Elon Musk SpaceX hopes to operate anywhere upwards of 12,000 Starlink satellites and satellites in orbits in orbit which vastly eclipses the previous total number of 2,000 active satellites. He already has 3,200. 3, or Jeff Bezos already has 3,200. So before these, these freaking guys start launching rockets into space, these private companies like Amazon and Tesla start launching satellites, we only had 2,000 of them. Now he wants to quintuple <laughs> the amount of satellites that are up there and what and the problem with this is that nobody knows the catastrophe when the catastrophe is ultimately going to hit where one of these where there's going to be too much debris and one of these things is going to collide with the other we're not syncing ourselves up with china's satellites and all that stuff for instance right and so what what cliff highs data is where cliff highs data comes in what it actually prescribes is that this space debris would become a major problem and it would knock out all sorts of systems and it would cause internet disruptions like you wouldn't believe and it, it would it would basically be the situation that you find yourself with it in the Sandra Bullock George Clooney movie gravity if, you, if you've seen that where the satellite breaks apart and just a bolt that's going a few thousand miles an hour pierces through the the outer casing of a sensitive piece of equipment and it's done and it starts to fracture apart itself because of the impact and you just poof, 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 chain reaction, and then you have space debris. Like if and that if anybody see the movie Wally, the Pixar movie Wally, where you got all that space debris in orbit, that's it seems to be a, a very large possibility that's our destiny because it's actually what Cliff High's data was prescribing would happen. So we have to figure out how to not use these rockets. Rockets just pollute, and this is where Nikola Tesla's actual paradigm comes in with renewable energies. And also where the current war, this old style Edison Tesla Tesla current war is is factoring in. So part of this part of this problem also is that they're, they're putting this technology up into space is not taking into consideration the grand solar minimum or the flux in the magnetic fields. To a large these guys are just launching them right, and. I don't know if anybody noticed, but we had a polar vortex hit the United States, which froze out and killed a bunch of crops in the last week. It was great weather for me. I got, it was 115 degrees in the Phoenix Valley last week and it dropped down into the 80s. So it's, it's been buco awesome for me, but not good for the food situation. And funny enough, I, I watched the GFS models, the GFS satellites. So I, I track this stuff on a daily basis to see, um, uh, you know what the patterns are, what the magnetic patterns are, so I can so I can guess when this stuff is going to happen, when these polar vortexes are going to dip down. The fact that it dipped down in September, nobody was anticipating, but that's what this grand solar minimum is going to going to be, as as you guys know. I talk all about it in my videos from last year. If you want to go give yourself a refresher, or just go over to Ben Davidson's channel, suspicious of observers. Uh, this is uh, his expertise. But uh, it wasn't on the news anywhere. It wasn't on the news anywhere. This doesn't have anything to do with the V-Stegonography, but it was conspicuously absent from the news leading up to the event. 
uh, all the news seems to be diverting the coverage over to all this chaotic stuff that we're talking about. So keep your eye out on the weather. It's going to be a harsh winter, guys. And I only I only mentioned this is this is the the forecast models as of August thirty first coming, and um, I'll, I'll link all this stuff so in case you want to track it yourself. But it's all all the all the news, of course, is focused on, focused on COVID, the election, Black Lives Matter, all this stuff. And uh, what you can see, of course, back when I was arguing here was that Russia was trolling us with the vaccine. And more more stuff came out since. In this article, over Chris McIntosh, his, his Capital Exploits blog they, that Zero Hedge hosted, um, it's a brilliant... It's a brilliant article, which very much reaffirms um, what I was supposing over there, right? Um, really good results with what they are providing in terms of vaccination care over there as well. I'm, I'm really wondering if this actually isn't really even just a, a real vaccine type of thing. Uh, which would be interesting because I don't trust that they would have been able to develop it any faster than vaccines have been developed in the past either or think that vaccines can even be made for, because it's a bioweapon. So I don't know. I, it's, it's, it's interesting to me. I'm not, it's, not a, it's not a situation I've picked apart entirely, but uh, even Joseph Farrell in his blog picked this up and he's got an opinion on this that uh, doesn't go all the, all the way to the to the side that we do in supposing that Russia is just trolling, but he does suspect that Russia is some component of Russia is trolling us, and of course this is this is one of those uh, reports based on the Russian vaccine that I can give to people, so you can kind of see it was a type. This I don't know if the, the, this was irrelevant or not. I was key in on five feast technology stuff, but I don't know if this has much to do with that. Um, Maybe, maybe other people that have had more time to investigate the, the COVID stuff lately can dig into this stuff. I've got a couple of interesting articles um, to, that I've read through just on the surface level that are, that are new research that everybody can have access to. And maybe I'll do another video on later, but the COVID bloom, the bloom pattern for the autumn, maybe we'll save this stuff for then because things are gonna get pretty bad in the schools and they're gonna shut down here pretty soon. Uh, another thing I'm going to post here is I'm, I'm also starting to look into the AstraZeneca failed trials in the United States. Uh, AZ are like Arizona, where the gold reset is. Remember what we're talking about the road to Ruta theory and the Grand Canyon being He's a loving guy. Whoops. And the Grand Canyon being an area that I think was was looted by the by the government when the lockdowns occurred because of course Arizona was if you've seen my previous videos over the summer Arizona was the only state that totally went into lockdown and I suspect of course that was the point in time where they used their opportunity to get the gold that was out there so they can re-ledger it I think the road to Ruta wishes and rainbows yellow brick road red flowers Wizard of Oz theme, meme, is playing out in front of us right now. This is, it's all too obvious, I think, to all of you at this point, too. But notice, the, by the way, the red, the red flowers, the, the same red flowers depicted in Frank Baum's version of Wizard of Oz, and the, and the exact same red flowers here. All of the colors of color land, plus the yellow, plus the, the gold, all central, themes to both, as we've discussed before, but the red flower in particular is something that I think is very significant, uh, especially when you're looking at uh, <laughs> the Canadian flower, like this has, this all of these these places like Canvas and Co Kansas and Colorado that exist in the lore of the Wizard of Oz, of course, I think also have been proven to have historical connotation. We explored that concept deeply in this video here, the coronavirus slavery of the cheetah. But we're, we're, we're not going to make any other aspirations based on this, or uh, aspirations, any other suggestions based on these letters right now. 
I only find it as a curiosity and, and leave it up to you guys maybe to help me with this to find out if there is any connection um, between the, the whole Bitcoin reset theme, the whole gold reset theme in this vaccine trial uh, because I can't quite see a way to connect it yet, but I suspect there is something there because the investment bank, JP Morgan, uh, was the one involved with this whole fiasco. That was the other piece that, that kind of set me off because that JP Morgan central to the Wizard of Oz, <laughs> the whole monetary reset component. Of course, they're on the Wall Street faction. So uh, pharmaceutical companies are over on that faction too. I forgot to mention with the Hollywood and the, and the Silicon Valley guys. So um, interesting stuff going on in the vaccine world too. But here's where we are going to start shifting gears toward the end of the video. And I'm going to quickly go through some articles that tie together the, the original themes of the beginning. And we're following the white rabbit down this rabbit hole. And this is where the rabbit hole has taken us. And Usagi is going to take us to space with all of this. Some very interesting stuff is happening with Shinzo Abe stepping down a couple weeks back. And he's saying he's re resigning for health reasons. I suspect that's probably not the case. Um, with all of with all of the the deals that now Russia and Japan are engaging in for trade, especially with the trade of technology, Japan's role actually in space in its its private space force and also uh, its role in theta. With Samsung, well, Samsung being the Korean company, but Sony being where it's going to be on the PlayStation. It's going to be Sony is one of the major investors in this. Sony and uh, a lot of the tech companies in Japan, I suspect, are going to play into this future space world more than the companies over in the United States. And those companies in Russia as well are going to factor in more, I think, in the financial infrastructure and things like this than the United States will. We, we're starting to see humanity going towards something here, more with uh, the ancient history and these threads that we're tying through. Once we can unplug the history, the history mystery, with the V-Cypher, I think we're going to be in a different spot. So. This is, this is just an announcement article for me to, to point out. It's just a BBC article. I don't really trust wholeheartedly their take on things. So I only point to this to show you that the event did happen. Um, but uh, what, what's also curious that's going on in Japan, and this is actually not related. I, I will post this because this, this is more, this is more relevant to earlier in the art, in the, in the video when I said the FDR election of 1942 also occurred on November 13th or November 3rd, 113, all of those Gematria figures that equal 113 are, you know, for lying and deceit, Jesuit casuistry, let's say. So, um, I haven't seen this series. I have so many, so many things to, to pick apart on Patreon. And again, the pat the patrons are going to get a poll there today That's they're going to get to vote on what we're decoding next. But uh, if anybody knows anything about this mini-series that aired on, on HBO, which is kind of this alternate history thing, uh, I, starring John Turturro, I, I welcome your thoughts on it because there's got to be something of a match to, to this year's election. But relating back to Japan, sorry for that little uh, segue, we're starting to see this is this is where it's factoring into the actual Edison's the the current war style Edison versus Tesla of old arrangement into a modern day version of this and the old industrial age corporate warfare that would go on with battling propaganda and stuff. It's getting crazy out there. So I've all I've already gone in 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 previous videos. I forgot which ones in particular they were. But talking about how the Robin Hood app is being used against Gen Z is part of this false, this false, false presumption that they can invest in money, invest their money, and win big. They're losing all of their money in options and futures, and they're younger than 18 years old. And there's this insanity to follow a leader in the market, and this whale who's been buying up Nasdaq 
uh, e ETFs and Invesco ETFs, which is causing the market to raise exponentially, even in the time of COVID. And this includes companies like we've talked about, the dumpster fire company of Tesla, Amazon's raising, Apple's raising. These are all of the companies that are involved with our mind control conspiracy and the, the creation of Bitcoin and the creation of the financial system that leads us where we're at. So there's this component where SoftBank, which is a Japanese bank and a very irresponsible one at that, who is very clearly part of the Wall Street faction, but in Japan nonetheless, again, the epicenter of all, all this activity is Japan. Japan's huge in the current events right now. And we have this SoftBank fiasco going on where they're, they're, they're executing this trade that they're calling a gamma squeeze. This is kind of, and we're not gonna go into the, the technicalities of this. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not interested in, in doing re really much of a finance channel. Uh, but since I do have a background in this stuff, I'll just say it's, it's, it's really doing the opposite in a lot of ways of shorting a stock and instead putting a ton of emphasis into buying certain positions. And these, in these positions tend to take the entire market up with you because you have, uh, you're buying into these NAS, NASDAQ tech heavy stocks. Remember these, you can see clearly which faction is, is doing this because the banks are involved with the tech companies and they have all these stock buyback programs that have been allowed since the credit default swap crisis of 2008. And we have this situation where they can manipulate the markets doing this. And, and it was found out how this happened. Zero Hedge broke the original story, which is why I'm giving credit to them. Financial Times took credit for breaking the story a day after because Zero Hedge never gets the credit for anything because they, they're they a blackballed site by the mainstream media. But uh, SoftBank put all these positions into these Invesco, which is a, which is a electronically uh, traded fund and ETF and the NASDAQ, all these tech heavy investments, right? So as they call them, they're the whale and, and these people were buying, 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 and it was still hungry, still, still hungry, causing all of these really weird situations to happen. Hertz, which was a bankrupt company, had all of its stock purchased and was higher than it was before, it was exponentially higher than it was before the bankruptcy. After all of the Robin Hood traders through this follow the leader process, had done so. Um, and you have this mess of a situation now that needs to be unwound, which doesn't bode well for stock market health. And I don't know how much longer because of this. It's only been a few days since people have found out and the stock market suffered greatly because of this, um, because it's manipulated anyway. But it's uh, quite frankly, this article, which I'll post from a couple of days ago, there, there's now warning that this this gamma trade terror, this negative gamma terror now, where, where all of these, there's all this volume had been put into it, is going to unwind, and that's not good. Now, one thing I wanted to show you guys, of course, Nasdaq NQ is one of one of the ETFs I was talking about, and Invesco is the other one I was talking about, which is QQQ is the call sign for that ETF. I'll show you. Here's the Invesco portfolio where you can go with a syndicate of other people and not a syndicate, not specifically an investment syndicate, but um, pool your funds in with an ETF where other, every, wherever, where other people are. And oh, there's this great, there's this great selling, selling slideshow of what you can get with this is what you're investing your money in. And you're investing in all these places all at once because we're pooling it for you. This, there's this whole ETF madness in the derivatives market, which also needs to be unwound. That's trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. <laughs> and this is, this is just not good with the money printing mechanisms being put into place. Um, I'm only pointing to this in reference to our channel and we're gonna stop getting into the, the financial weeds now because it re again, it relates back to this whole re-standardization of a sounder money of Bitcoin, which we've discussed at length on this channel and will continue to do so deeper over on over on the theta side because China's doing it too. We've got to do it. And I really do suspect because of the Fed Boston who released the Wishes and Rainbows comic book, Federal Reserve Bank of Boston right there, that we are in the process of changing over to these red flower Bitcoin monetary standard systems because also 
what was yesterday but 9-11. And 9-11 was the date that Ruder was, had written in the sand on the, newer, on the newer version of the comic book. This is the old 1981 version. The 2007 version had 9-11 written in the sand. Print money to infinity, as Bix Weir has shared on his research, right? Print money to infinity, crash the system, have all of the infrastructure, space technology, all that stuff is built now, and then you reset it with a Bitcoin standard. That's the plan. That's the plan pertaining to the comic book. And that's, and that's what we are seeing play out through all of these actual references to it, as we see. Um, it's funny because again, we're following the white rabbit into space. How does that f factor in? Well, it's funny because Decrypt posted a couple of articles two days apart from each other, one on September 6th and one on September 8th, all about money laundering. One of the biggest concerns and biggest arguments even Bitcoin is, oh, well, hackers can use it to launder Bitcoin because now new criminals are finding new ways to launder it, right? It has to do with hacking, mining, researches and stuff. Well, okay, great. The argument of I, I've always had with people though is people prefer to use money. People can also use cash than Bitcoin. And that's a much more ubiquitous use case for laundering than Bitcoin. And so a couple days later, cryptocurrencies rarely used to launder money, fiat preferred. <laughs> so my viewpoint is vindicated on this, on this, on this piece here, um, based on this, based on this piece of research. Um, Swift, the money system of the United States where Fedcoin would preside, this is what's hilarious, is more susceptible to laundering than Bitcoin. And of course it is. So is the Fed going to go with a Fed coin or are they going to go with Bitcoin as the standard? Well, if the people that are at the Boston Fed specifically that I think have their head screwed on straight to reset this the way that it should be do you know, to the to the playbook of the Wizard of Oz, Wishes and Rainbows comic book, uh, I think that we're not going to have to worry about a lot of this stuff. It's, it's, it's actually not a really great method of, of laundering because the FBI has found ways to back engineer and track people, even though Bitcoin is totally trustless. It's, it doesn't mean it's completely anonymous because of the, the public key situation that you find yourself in. So you have to be above board a lot of the time to be trading with, with, with Bitcoin is another factored component to this. So we're getting closer and closer and closer. I'm just showing everybody uh, as this stuff hits the media, the arguments over the next couple of years, over the next couple of months probably, will quickly start to filter into the public where they hopefully understand where we're headed. Um, we also have the election coming up and I just wanted to point out Fox, the Fox faction the, over at the Fox network is the one hosting the, is the one hosting the debates. And uh, CNN, of course, is complaining because it pushes conspiracy theories and disinfo. Can't really argue with that one, actually. If it, because of the Fox faction, the Jesuits are casuistry, disinfo, conspiracy theories. And Fox fanatics are also followers of Q. So people that watch Fox are, are Q nuts. They, they're zealots for Q. So they, they're totally buying into something over on the Jesuit casuistry, casuistry agenda. And it's also been pointed out, of course, how Tr President Trump is against the Fox faction. And that, I, would, I, would, I would agree. Every, everybody says, oh, Fox is the pro-Trump channel, but that's how the casuistry works. Learning against learning, the whole concept of casuistry, they're using subterfuge, right? So, their star hosts have made discrediting other news organizations and journals into core tenet of their programs, just like Jesuit casuistry. So be careful of Fox, is all I'm telling you. Be careful of CNN, too. Remember, 113 is disinfo, lies. All the media is, is, is that, and election season is going to get nuts. But as it relates to this current war I've been alluding to, this and this space situation, let's, let's, let's now close out the video on the concept of our modern-day current war. And this is a fun one to pick apart because as I've been sharing with people, this company, this local Phoenix company, Nikola, has it down. They are a fuel cell company that sells truck routes and actually sells 
buggies and trucks that are that are based on this fuel cell platform in a way that's profitable, in a way that has ways to pay back their investors, in ways that are sustainable and don't have the externalities that somebody like a Tesla does. Yet Tesla is on paper worth all this money because of the government subsidy. Whereas Nikola is going about it the, the correct way. As if as if they're a pre-2008 company who's launching and they're an actual company who's putting all this who's putting all this sweat and labor into getting actual business deals with rider trucks and actual business deals with Anheuser Busch to distribute Budweiser in the Southwest and pre and pre-selected routes that they'll build these stations on to refuel. The trucks are actual instead of conceptual. Right? So all of these advantages with the hydrogen fuel cells, here's one of their trucks, and all these different locations that they've built out, these guys also started a partnership with GM in the last week on September 8th to partner in the engineering department to build their trucks, which are actually pretty cool. So not only do they have the semi-trucks, but they have, oh yeah, plus they've got They've got jet skis and these buggies, which is pretty neat, which is, you know, I totally want to get one of each of these, you know, the, the NZT and the Wave, those things are pretty cool. Um, but they also sell this this Badger, which is pretty cool. That's a cool truck. Um, way better than the Cybertruck. And GM is partnering specifically with the construction of this, plus infrastructure for the fuel cell technology. So. There, there's, there's a lot happening locally with this company, and it's an actual car company. It's not, it's not this ethereal, it's not this ethereal idea. Let's distract from the, what's actually happening on the books thing, like Tesla is. But it's, it's not, uh, it's not coming without its hit to Tesla because meanwhile, while Nikola is brokering all of these huge blockbuster deals in the terms of billions of dollars. We have Tesla cratering. All of that false gamma stuff back with the SoftBank fiasco factored into Tesla skyrocketing, but then crap, they, they reached all new, new time high, split the stock up at 700 bucks, and boom, they've been crashing ever since, and people have been losing their ass. And all the meanwhile, consumer reports coming out with scathing reports full of not, Teslas or not, not that they're crap, but none of the money that you're paying for this is worth it. It's just, you know, really, really blase support for, for these cars where, te where Nikola is getting praise, Tesla is not. Plus, there was a huge thing in China where a Tesla lost control and blazed through a parked car, a, a parked crowd of cars, killed a bunch of people, tons of people inju injured critically. It was a terrible PR thing for Tesla over the last couple of weeks on that front. And so Tesla keeps crashing. Well, what do you know? After all this, after all this uh, positive news for, for Nikola, you have none other than Hindenburg Research. Hindenburg, Hindenburg, guys, the air, the air, the, the also the, the air, the, uh, the airship technology that's behind the scenes which has everything to do with what evolved into the space technology we know today. This is a piece of iconography here that you can probably, well, everybody knows the Hindenburg event, I hope. I hope I don't have to explain that any further. But that's the name of this research firm, which is updated on September 11th, but posted on the 9th. After, after basically lying about all this, Trevor Milton, the CEO of Nikola, sued them. They started. He got it. He got a lawsuit going against them. Said, "Give me a couple hours to prepare uh, a response." Didn't say much in the original response, but they don't really point to much in this report except for for really like uh, nitpicky things. Um, And so this quote right here, this is what I was looking for, is what I want to read. It says, yesterday, an activist short seller whose motivation is to manipulate the market and profit from a manufactured decline in our stock published a so-called report replete with misleading information and salacious accusations directed at our founder and former and executive cha chairman. This is speaking to Trevor Milton 
at Nikola, right? To be clear, this was not a research report and is not accurate. This was a hit job for short sale profit driven by greed. And it totally was. If, if, if you guys wanna go look at the report, the report is right here. Um, And uh, you can you can read through the the high notes on I think Zero Hedge even did or did an article on that where you, where you can read through the high notes, but it reminds me again of that Edison Tesla current war situation, where Edison would go out and he would, he would electrocute elephants for instance all this all this shit that wasn't true, just pure propaganda pieces. So in this age of lies and misinformation misdirection, an actual company is getting the short end of the stick here. One that's actually also got the Lambda steganography in its title, as I've showed. The writing of the V, correct? So I think there's something more to this whole Nikola company, plus it's local to me and I, I'm just a huge fan of it. So keep continuing to follow this story. The current war situation will continue to debunk this clown. Um, and and I'll, I'll, he's basically just been I, I, it's just like a freaking joke. His whole his whole career. I don't know what to say about him, other than you know, <laughs> leaving leaving the the current war up to its own volition to see who wins out, which I think time will tell. The profitable company of Nikola will overtake this false paradigm, this rocket technology, battery technology that is Tesla. The bastardization of everything Tesla was not, and even though fuel cells aren't the, the wavelength technology that, that we're gonna have of, of Nikola Tesla's with the space tech, it's at least a very good step in the right direction to get us transitioned into that paradigm. So, like I said, to, to call out the, the very end of the video, please beware, guys. This is a kind of, so the, there's, there's gonna be some stuff that may occur over the course of the next couple months. Coronavirus is coming back. But we're also seeing the actual wars and the flashpoint start up in, the, in, in China and also in the Middle East. Um, because I want to keep you guys all balanced and, and aware of this stuff, I want to point back to a couple Cliff High reports relating to what he called the Israeli mistake uh, in his reports from 2009. And as I've talked about with these particular reports before, the predictive modeling that he rendered is doing a very good job at telling the future as it relates to the sun disease, the coronavirus that he's been forecasting for 20 years. But there was this other thing where he was talking about the Israeli mistake manifesting. And again, his data I think is about 10 years behind. He never got the exact number of the dates figured out He was because he, he was reading psychic emotional prescience from language being used by the populace, not necessarily exact timelines to tell what might happen. And we've had a situation occur in the Middle East in Beirut. I think you guys are very familiar with the big explosion that happens, which I think more and more and more is resembling what he's called the Israeli mistake in these reports. So I'm gonna read you some context here. I'm gonna show you why that might matter and why that might actually become a huge focus for us moving forward as we talk more on YouTube about the current war situation. But he was getting descriptors about something called the Israeli mistake for several years in his report. You see, this data set includes supporting aspects and attributes set that have maintained for several years that the attacking forces will be surprised, startled, shocked at the reception that meets their intrusion. Everybody was shocked that this explosion happened. And anybody who's, it, who's, who's wise to the suspicion behind it knows that it was probably an attack of some sort, right? So this attack is described as taking losses that are greater than half within the first few minutes of the, the war, it says. The attack is met, received in a manner and fashion a tactic that is described as beyond imagination. We've never been able to imagine an explosion that big. I really, to this day, don't know how many people died. They say a hundred something died. <sighs> give me a break. Give me a break. That, that, that it it absolutely obliterated an entire port uh, Anyway, so unfortunately it says Zionist attackers will continue their assault that will result in a mistake of truly global ramifications. The air assault, including drones and missiles, will be able to get to the tertiary target and will unknowingly launch an attack on its third level target, further described as a crop yielding field that will result in a giant mistake. And I think this 
term crop yielding field, just like some of his data probably gets, it could be misconstrued as crop storage facility or, you know, you name it. And this is along with the ammonium nitrate that was being stored there. There was all sorts of stuff being stored in this facility. So I'm wondering as further reports come out around the Beirut explosion, what actually happened around this giant mistake? Because again, could it potentially have happened that a drone or a missile hit it? Yeah, I think so. Or something else, much, you know, much from much higher up there. But the, here's the part of the data that, that strikes me is that the data sets describe a salt as producing a volcano of, of ash death from the storage facility. So you see how it's like crop yielding field, field storage facilities. So these are being interchangeably used by the language generator that he's, that he's programmed. He says under the field. And this volcano of ash is described as spewing forth for weeks. The ash death described as being so radioactive a material that the single dust mote being inhaled will produce violent death through anal and internal bleeding and the bleeding from the mucous membranes. This death form has aspect attributes set in to support death dancing in which the affected die so painfully that their last hours are spent writhing as their bodies consume into the rash internal rot and internal coagulation. We see a lot of that stuff happening with the cytokine storms already with the coronavirus too, right? So is this getting conflated with the time period? I wonder that's, that this stuff is naturally going to start happening again across the world as we get into the fall. Because further in another one of his reports, and again, these are from 2009. So almost to the day or just a couple days away from it being the 21st or 11th anniversary of, the, of these reports coming out, more on the Israeli mistake in this report. He says, global pop, sweat, domo arigato, mutant, feminine mystique, and breakaway. These are the themes. So we have sweat, domo arigato, which is the Japanese Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. Thank you very much for the technology. Japanese, right? Mutant is one of the themes. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, who have the whole theme of Japan, by the way. The Shredder, Splinter, this is all Japanese samurai concept even in the Ninja Turtles. And Usagi Yojimbo, Follow the White Rabbit to Space. What's going on here, right? What's going on? What's going on? This is this is fun stuff, guys. So, um, let me get back to the report. So this report, a couple of Paris says, the data sets continue to grow under the Israeli mistake subset. And we see them to note that the Israeli mistake subset has been seen in the data for a number of years and seemingly waxes and wanes with new supporting sets over this time and is irregular, has not continued to grow at a steady pace like some of his other sets. Further, while, while the George Ure postulate coming to the idea that the longer we have a data set in model space, the more impact the circumstances would have when manifest has been repeatedly proven, which means since the Israeli mistake is coming up so often, it is, it is likely to have a greater impact than other events because it's mentioned so often in his data. So he's saying the Israeli mistake subset has not had continuous growth, but it has had other longer term sets. So it's mention is consistent. It's not growing, but it's consistent. So we have yet to know if this set will either manifest in reality, nor if it will have the expected level of impact implied by its multiple year lifespan within model space. So he's basically speaking to the to he thinks it's probably an accurate term because it keeps coming up, but he's not sure of, level, of the level of impact it'll have when that event manifests, whatever it might be. But it's interesting because in the next paragraph, he says the types of behavior that will be starting around the time that model space, his, 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 his data sets are predicting that this Israeli mistake would happen, these things are going to be going on. So here are the prescient markers of what humanity will be going through in this time that the Israeli mistake happens. A backwater pool in the stream of our data sets occurring in the global population entity suggests that as a direct result of, the, of a biochemical and biological warfare situation, I remember back, back in 2009, this is coronavirus, this is the CCP virus. So in, is, as a direct result from that CCP virus, the sun disease, the subset of the disease descriptor set of the global pop entity, a large portion of the global populace will become Asian in the sense of the acceptance and practice of bowing as a new form of greeting. Remember, 
We're not ha shaking hands anymore because of coronavirus. So new forms of greeting are going to come to, uh, come about, about Asian influence, right? While not to say that handshaking or even hugs and kisses will cease suddenly, hasn't totally stopped, just like today, the data sets also suggest that they will be less practiced over the next few years due to human human to human contact being a diseased vector. Again, the coronavirus, right? So he's predicting the situation we're going through right now where, social, where the social order is changing their behaviors. He says the dropping and reduction of handshaking be between acquaintances is part of the trend that will introduce respect bowing against, of, of the planetary populace as a whole. The new social body acceptance of the bowing ritual has secondary and tertiary supporting sets going back to the idea of both a revival of ancient nuances of bowing within the Japanese culture, there's your Japanese culture, as well as a renaissance of new forms and meanings of symbolic greetings, which will emerge from the resurgence within Japan, as well as its export to the global populace. A renaissance of ritual masters from Japan subset is inter interesting in that it cross-links over to the space goat farts entity that indicate the time during the alien wars or determined contact period and beyond. And the Japanese culture will be the center of diplomatic skills and development creation for the inner culture, extraterrestrial contact, symbols, and meaningful rituals. Oh my God, right? So this, what it, this is basically saying is Japan will be the center of all this knowledge coming back forth it will have everything to do again with the ancient history that happened with the alien wars because we're bringing back ancient norms and Japan will be the diplomacy center for re-interacting with those aliens as his data is prescribing. The Anu, the Ainu, the Sumerai, the Sumerian descendants of the gods what are we about to find out as it relates to following the white rabbit into space and Japan and the whole history mystery as it pertains to Japan, guys, and the Fox faction hiding all of it? Remember, grow your kundalini. S snake food is the toad. Find where the toad falsely represents history. Consume that information. Reverse the V into a lambda and ultimately support our friends Nikola in the current war in the current war of Ed, of of new school Edison Elon Musk against new school Tesla Trevor Milton watch out for this guys this is the Beirut blast and this is what I'm this is what I'm alluding to there are fires that are blazing over the last couple of days that are spewing poison, toxic smoke into the air that seems suspiciously like this volcano of ash death that Cliff High's data from July of 2019 were prescribing. We will see if this is actually truly the Israeli mistake, but more importantly, I wanna figure out how the aliens are involved in all of this. And the Japanese and Fox Mulder and are the aliens hiding in plain sight? Interesting article coming out from The Guardian the other day too, which I'll link that you guys can read at your disposal. This is a fun one to read um, as it ties in the pursuit of Mars, how Elon Musk also factors into that. Mars is going into, has gone into retrograde in this current period of time, which will last all the way until April, which will also mean total catastrophe and destruction. But ultimately, like I showed in my alchemy series too, that culminated a couple of weeks ago. We're waiting until 2024 for the, for the eclipse cycle as well. So keep your eyes on the stars in the sense of astrology and the strength, the sense of the new technology paradigm. Uh, follow me over to Theta for, for some of the more live discussions. I love y'all. I'm, I'm really happy to be back. Um, support me over there on Patreon. If you want to get more regular videos coming in, because again, I'll, I'll be, I'll be posting just as often as I have been every couple of weeks about the current war situation, these types of decodes, but you'll get a more, you'll get a more complete picture even of the white rabbit if you, if you even just go watch that Bucky O'Hare video. So see you guys all soon. 
and uh, expect that Patreon poll to come out later today so so my patrons can, can kind of vote on where, where we're going to take the streaming and the, and the extra videos going forward. So take it easy. You guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend.